Hey class, welcome back. We're going to uh, start to wrap up the end of our unit on the living world. Um, two more sections to go here. One, uh, 1G, natural ecosystem changes. You can see we'll talk about how ecosystems change and uh, the process of ecological succession. To begin with, there's a lot of info here. Basically what we're saying is um, that ecosystems change due to natural disruption. Things happen in our environment on this planet that are going to alter the way um, different events occur and the way our ecosystems look. Uh, so natural disasters, tornadoes, hurricanes, asteroids, fires um, are all going to change the shape of the landscape and ecosystem function uh, to some degree. Uh, other things we've seen and study and, and notice about the planet as we learn more is that uh, things like climate, uh, ice, sea level, and habitats and, and biomes, um, they all change and move and shift and fluctuate. Um, we see patterns of fluctu fluctuation for some of these things. So uh, we give them category names or categories like periodic, episodic, and random. Um, periodic examples of like wet and dry seasons, we see that um, occur at regular frequency and kind of alternate back and forth. Things like episodic, uh, occasional and irregular at times. So hurricanes, droughts, fires, we have like hurricane season and fire season, uh, but they occur with irregular frequency and intensity. Uh, and then we have random, which is no regular frequency intensity, things like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, uh, asteroid impact. Uh, just to direct your attention over here, uh, things like uh, carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere um, that we've measured over time in the green line, uh, sea level rise that we measure here in this smaller graph in the middle, um, and sea level geological record. You can see all these things. We can see some patterns and some uh, irregularities from these patterns. So when we start to see spikes where things haven't uh, spiked that high before, we start to lead to say, what are some causes um, that might be the case? What are some human um, human uh, influences that might have led to these changes? Uh, same thing with carbon dioxide and temperature. We see fluctuations, um, but we get to the point where we see these massive spikes um, to the point where uh, we don't have a record of things changing as much as they're changing now, uh, and that leads us to believe that humans are uh, are in some some capacity to blame. Um, ecological succession is a process of, of natural ecosystem change as well. Uh, there are two major types, primary and secondary. Uh, basically, when we say succession, we're saying a change in ecosystem over time and the composition of components in that ecosystem are going to change as well. So to begin with, we have pioneer organisms. They're going to be essential in understanding ecological succession because Pioneers are the first ones to do anything, and pioneer organisms are going to show up first, and they're going to start to colonize and form the base of uh, living matter in an ecosystem. So the reason they're able to do this is for these down here. They can tolerate intense sunlight, uh, survive in low nutrients, make many small seeds, and reproduce quickly, mature quickly. Um, technically, typically, they are small in size. Things like algae, lichens, and mosses are the, the three creatures that are really able to start to uh, colonize and build the foundation of life on uh, bare rock. So speaking of building on bare rock, this is what we refer to as primary succession. It's essentially the changing ecosystem starting from nothing. Um, this bare rock is a foundation and then building up from that. Uh, usually these ecosystems begin uh, from either a volcanic eruption, which is like a reset button. We have volcanic rock forming. You can see these plants uh, begin to find areas where their seeds land and can grow. Um, volcanic eruptions is one. Retreating glaciers is another. As a glacier melts, retreats back. It scrapes away anything that was there and uh, leaves the bare rock behind to be colonized by those pioneer organisms. Process of primary succession, uh, starting with bare rock over here. We move on to soil needing to be built up for supporting larger plants, so we need these pioneer organisms to do that job for us. Lichens and mosses will grow on there, secrete weak acids um, to break down the rock. They will also just grow and die, um, and grow and die, and start to build up a foundation of living material. At that point, uh, grasses, small herbs, and shrubs can start to grow, forms a thicker vegetation layer that can start to support more animal life. Uh, 
then we get larger plants like jack pines and spruce all the way up to the balsam fir, paper birch, really big, um, you know, nutrient intense trees. Uh, this process is going to take the longest out of all of them, thousands of years, because there is no soil. We have to build the soil before big organisms can start to grow. Secondary succession is a little faster. It's a little bit of a shortcut. It begins with soil from a previous ecosystem. This could be an ecosystem that's removed um, or disturbed in some way. Uh, so something like abandoned land, uh, fires, storms, disasters, deforestation, uh, disease spread, and pest. Uh, basically wiping out the ecosystem but keeping the soil in place and the ecosystem is able to bounce back and rebuild from it. So this process, we can see here, we're starting with soil from previous ecosystem. We can then uh, get some weeds and grasses start to grow right away. Perennial grasses that will come back year to year and build deeper root systems are able to come in quicker. Uh, this process takes hundreds of years because of this. This is a jump start. It's a shortcut. Uh, we don't need to wait for soil to be built uh, to a depth and nutrient level to support these larger things. So then we can get shrubs and, and small pines coming in all the way up to mature oak and hickory forests. Aquatic succession can be a little different. We can talk about uh, forming a swamp or a marshland um, from uh, a pond or lake. And essentially uh, organic matter, nutrients, will, will die and decay and fall to the bottom. And that you can see that the pond starts to sink in or starts to fill in over time and then allows plants to be able to grow these semi-aquatic aquatic plants to grow like cattails and we start forming this uh, marshy area which eventually can fill in to become a meadow um, taking tens to hundreds of years similar to secondary succession. Changing conditions during succession understanding that early stages in pioneer communities we have gross productivity uh, that's very low. Uh, the total amount of energy being able to captured by sunlight by producers is low. They, uh, they don't have a high energy demand. They don't have the ability to do that. They don't have big leaf and root structures to deal with that. Um, so they grow where there isn't much going on. Uh, but it, as a consequence, the total amount of energy they take in is low. Uh, net productivity is high uh, for the entire ecosystem because there's con consumers aren't really there doing uh, respiration. There's not a high energy demand. Uh, so net productivity is high because respiratory energy is low. Um, Later stage of succession, climax community, nutrients in the soil are going to decrease over time. They kind of they kind of increase and then decrease. So it's kind of like as we're we're moving through uh, our nutrient graph, uh, as we move through, is going to go uh, low to high, and basically you see like kind of a, a peak in the middle, and then it starts to decrease as we get these bigger producers that start to take nutrients back out of the soil. Uh, gross productivity remains high in this case because we have many producers doing photosynthesis, capturing sunlight. Net productivity is low um, because now we get consumers who are able to live in this mature forest. Uh, they're doing a lot of work, consuming a lot of energy, and uh, also uh, using a lot of that energy. So we have a high amount of respiratory loss in this ecosystem.